Hey everyone, it's Aaron Saxton, that girl from Jersey. And my next guest made my day. I had just announced I was going to launch this show eons ago. And not only did this guest, her name's Chris Ward, not only did Chris send me a note, but she sent me a video note. And it was like this beautiful video note. And it was saying that she wants to be on the show. And here's why. And then there was social proof and backing her up as to the why. And I'm like, you had me at, oh my gosh, I want to be on your show. This woman is the epitome of marketing, the epitome of a great heart, an old soul. And she's the author of Win the Hour, Win the Day. Chris Ward, welcome to our show. Oh my gosh, it's the best welcome I've ever gotten. I think even from family. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure. You are, I mean, we go way back, right? Yes, we we yeah. really go way back. We've known each other how many years now? I don't know. I'd say between 10 and 15. That's it's a long time. Long. Have I aged yeah. at all? Not a bit. I think you're reverse <laughs> aging. I like, this is why I keep her around. Yeah. <laughs> And you are an amazing photographer, you're an amazing writer, and you're a marketing expert. Thank you. Yes, actually, I haven't done photography in quite some long time. That's sort of been something I gave up years ago. But, but yes, you're still good involved. at it. Yeah, but thank you. I'll take it. Uh, it definitely evolved into a, into a marketing company, so it's been very exciting. So what kind of marketing do you do? Everybody has their, including myself, everybody has a different definition of marketing. So what what kind of marketing do you do? What what What's your specialty? My specialty is working with uh, clients that are of a service-based industry that have been in business usually about five or so years. And what they have skill sets where they're really, you know, they, they've got some real assets, like maybe uh, they're good at speaking gigs or they get on local TV or they've got things that they're confident to get out but they're not getting the stickability or the leverage off that. So I'm really lucky that I work with very talented people. They may put on an event once a year where they have impact in their community. And so what we do is market that more effectively and make sure that there's sustainability there. So we work with a really special sort of profile of person. Awesome. So in your book is called Win the Hour, Win the Day. What does that mean? Yes. Well, it means if you can win the hour, you can win the day. And that's the big, it, that, it literally is that, that because too many people dive into Monday morning to-do list in hand and you think I'm going to take on the world and you have no real plan and it goes off the rails and you beat yourself up at the end of the day when the to-do list, you know, you don't know one thing is two hours and the other thing is two days. And so you get all you know, caught up in that grind of small business. So if you break it down and you have build success with one hour, you can replicate that really easily. So it really is taking it down to the hour. And then within the hour, so you say, I mean, I kind of, I spaz out all the time. And before I know it, something with my son Eric is happening and there's reactionary moments within my day, completely not planned for. So how can I win the hour if I'm constantly like, pa-ching, 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 pa-ching. Like, so obviously I'm sabotaging myself, right? Can you help me? Well, you're not always sabotaging yourself. Like you said, with Maybe. Your son. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes you definitely are. There, there's two parts. Let me unpack that. So let me go to the sabotaging part first. What happens, and, and my clients tell me this, is when we start working and they start getting results and it's effective and there's clarity and there's calm and they start, oh, it's just so exciting, they will admit that they're not used to lacking that stimuli, that when you get busy, you're like, okay, I, this isn't working, so I look to the email for distraction. So what they start to do is identify when they pull themselves off course because they're looking for an excuse, like kind of like exercising. Oh, it's raining. I can't possibly go out. Thank heavens it started to rain, right? So you start to self-sabotage that way. But when you start to see that, that's a big step of growth and you can adjust accordingly. The second thing and the question I get all the time, especially from moms, is, okay, something's come up with Eric. That's the situation. Well, great. What I would tell you is this is when it's your biggest asset. So, for example, last week I had a situation one day 
where something was on my phone and I'm on the phone uh, on the phone with Apple and it took 45 minutes and we fixed it. Now, my previous coping skills years previously would have been to run around into a tizzy all day trying to catch up for that lost time, stressing everyone out around me and just go, go, go. But what I did is I looked and I said, okay, I've lost 45 minutes. So then I looked at my day and I said, what are the priorities? What do I need to move? And let's proceed with the calm and clarity that will give me the best results versus trying to spin out of control and catch up. So when you break it down and things do come up, then that's your best tool because you can look at the inventory of the day and say, okay, I have a clear vision of the day. What can I move? Do you find that when the hour, when the day is good for people that still write with pencils and paper in their calendar? Well, you can do really what I would tell people is the tools really don't matter. There are, you know, tools that save you a few steps, but if you don't have the fundamentals in place, I mean, I get the opposite question that all the time, well, what's the best hacking tools and the best software? And I tell people, well, you know, you can give me, you know, actually I did a funny video on Instagram and I was showing a hammer and I was saying, look, you can give me this hammer, but I can't build a house because I don't have the skill set. In the middle of the video, I dropped the hammer and I said, I can't even hold the damn hammer. So clearly. So the point of the story is the tools won't save you. And that's the biggest misnomer. Mm. So once you get this down in place, if you like using it in pencil, my only concern would be if you lose that document or in the old school, you lose the book, then you've got no backup. So that's kind of scary. Um, and you can communicate with others online much more quickly if it's on digital, but really the fundamentals are the mindset. If you can make time management, your superpower, you can do anything. I love that. You know, for me, I'm, I'm going completely blind. Honestly, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I just, there are readers now everywhere, right? So for me on my phone, when I have, when I get hit with a, like what I'm calling a, like a, I'm looking at my calendar and then I promise you, I never know where these are. If there's a crisis coming, I don't know where these readers are and I wear contacts. And so people email me and say, get by focals. I get it all. Trust me. I've explored it. And So then I'm struggling because I'm looking down, I'm trying to figure out how to stay organized, but life's still happening. And that's, that's where I, I mean, I I think my body just goes like, and I get like analysis paralysis of what to do. And I can't be the only one that happens to, but I actually then even get a stomach ache with it. And, um, I have an assistant now we delegate. I try to keep it clear. I try not to over jam the day but gosh as a mom of a teenager who works from home with two dogs so I'm thinking maybe I should go back to old school because and just never lose that calendar sucker because then at least it's there and I can look but I don't know but according to you that's not really going to help anyway it's that mindset of that blocks of time I'm hearing you I just have to talk it out so I'm, I'm, I'm listening. I need to just digest it though. Cause I'm, I'm trying what you're saying on for size. Yeah. And you know, it, you didn't, here's the, there's a couple problems here. First of all, you didn't, <laughs> there's more than a couple. My <laughs> yeah. You didn't create these habits in a day, so they can't be unpacked in a day. But I will tell you that n- no success can be built upon, you know, a, a weak foundation. So that's just it. Once you get this foundation in place, like you can execute on any level. And, and that's a really exciting part to me is I don't think business should be grind. I don't think your dreams should cost your lifestyle and all that other stuff. Right. So everybody's got big dreams. And, and I had the same, I had my marketing and branding company. And then I said, okay, I'm going to write a book. And of course that took way more work than I understood. And then I had to compress that in the same amount of time. And then, you know, I'd been off social media for a while for a couple of reasons. And then I had to do that. And now you got to market the book, but I do that all in the same amount of time. So every day I look and say, okay, What can I put in place to support me at a higher and higher level of efficiency? So you do need to have some fundamentals there, but also I, I know your enthusiasm and your energy and your excitement for things. So I think there are some fundamental issues there that are not about the pen and paper and the, because you can change the font size on your phone. You can do a lot of things. I have. 
I, okay. I, I did. I did that too. Just a few days ago, I got a new phone and I changed the font size and I said, this is going to fix everything. Yeah. I said it just like that too. I think it's in it. <laughs> sometimes you look for healthy distractions and excuses. So, and I'm just throwing that out there uh, because I do think there is very few people that I know that like yourself, you can make anything sound good and positive and entertaining. Like you could be sitting there looking at a pile of garbage saying, look, Look at it laying on the floor, confident, looking up at me, that pile of garbage that the dog ate. Those so, eggshells mock me all the time. Yes. Yeah, so, so I do think your enthusiasm uh, has a wonderful energy to it. But underneath that, if you, you want to take a serious look at that, I think there are definitely, you know, should, should we be working together? There's different strategies you can put in place, but you do have to be you know, you, you have to want to see some change. Right? I do want to see some change. So I officially want to start working with you. We, you heard it here, folks. <laughs> we'll mark my progress on the show. We'll put it on the calendar, move it around a bunch of times. <laughs> In different pretty fonts. Yes. With different and colors. I, that's the thing too. Time management sounds really heavy. And I had a lot of pushback on time management for years because first of all, I was really organized and I got a lot done in a day. So I couldn't figure out how I could get more done. I thought, please, you cannot outwork me. So I didn't, but there was just so many heavy systems out there that if you put them in place, they just sort of like choked you. And, and then it was just, by the time you put that in place, you could have got more work done. Right. So our book, I don't know who R is because it's mine, but I always feel like I have well, a team. But I do know who it is. Yeah. You and all your personalities in your head are friends with all of the personalities in my yes. head. So my book, it's really about simple and easy strategies because I know what you're talking about. I remember in grade, I think it was 11. Now, why they have exams when summer starts, I don't know. But I decided this year I was going to be a better student. I was going to try harder, study harder. So I made this beautiful calendar with all different colors, and it was awesome. And I had this all set out how if I studied two hours a day, this was, oh, this was, I was going to ace everything. So the next week, not so much. So what did I do? I spent time revamping the calendar, right? Instead so, of studying. <laughs> yes, instead of studying. And so come the third week, I think I need to study nine hours a day. And of course, that did happen right so I totally hear what you're saying mm -hmm. and the problem is there's just too many complicated systems out there when you're already out of control is how you feel then trying to put out of control into this is very difficult whereas what I do with when they are when the day and we've had a lot of success off this over year, the years is it really is pulling out your personality and your strengths and leveraging it in your time frame and working with you so it's not trying to stick you into something else which I don't think could be done in your case okay so <laughs> so I heard this rumor that you think Rocky movies are the best franchise out there what <laughs> what my team told me to ask you that I've been friends with you as we said for a long time I've never heard this so I'll bite why? <laughs> all right, Chris, why are the Rocky franchises the best out there? Well, first of all, how much time do we have left in this podcast? Because that's a whole discussion. <laughs> Just oh tell your story, girl. Okay, I do love the Rocky franchise on so many levels, and now they've revamped it, and they've got Creed, and it's just amazing. I think it is, of course, the, the commitment and, of course, the montage of you can do anything. But I think Sylvester Sloan himself, when he sold that story, he had no electricity, and he he lost his dog, and they Aww. were willing to buy this the, the movie from him, but he couldn't act in it because he was unknown. And he held out until he was part of the project. And I mean, what a risk to take when you're sitting there in the dark and you lost your dog. And so he held out and he got his name attached to the project and the story unfolds. And of course, the dog in Rocky One is the one he bought back with the money he made for the movie. See, that's a good story. I know. Now, don't you want to have a montage? <laughs> I want to go buy another dog. I know. So, yes, I love the movies, and uh, I love the story behind the movies. I love that. So yeah. I, I do want to turn the corner a little bit and talk about when your husband was diagnosed with colon cancer, and you felt that it was all on you. Yes. So, I... I mean, you know, I mean, we're having so much fun and to, to no, like, go ahead, ask halt, the, halt the, yeah. but you have a, this boat analogy. And I, I think there's a lot of us that feel it's, 
we'll just talk about this with everybody because I do feel that whether it's a sick loved one, someone who passed, or even in happy times, there there does seem to feel like that all on you. But walk us through all of that so our audience is brought up to speed as to what I'm referring to. Okay, so that's another reason I wrote the book is because I felt that, you know, there are things that happen into every life. There are interruptions and your life should, your work should support your life, not consume it. So that if something happens, what do you do? In my situation, when he was diagnosed, you know, aside from the fact that these chemo and treatments and surgeries just totally, that's a full-time job in itself, but let's talk reality, take emotion out of it. That's an income that I could lose is as you know, so you can't be going, Oh my gosh, this is all happening and it's costing extra money and time and all this stuff. And I could potentially lose an income. And now I'm going to go back to a business that's gone. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's what happened is when I was pulled away from the business, when I returned, it had not only survived, but it had thrived. And I had been very absent and my clients had not been aware of that. And that's sort of had the beginning of the book, but to take you back. Yes, he was diagnosed. I, I had a full life. We had boys, um, you know, they're in their late teens now. And, uh, you know, I had a business that was growing. I think I was only in business six years then. So I was working a lot of hours, but he was like my biggest fan. So he certainly did anything he could to support me. So he start. he said, I turned him into a 1950s housewife in two years because he started doing more of the laundry and doing more of the cooking. Cause he, he, his thing was, I always pushed myself too hard. So he did things to make sure that they weren't there when I got home. Yeah. So he was really good about that. And that was amazing. Plus from being a great cheerleader. So then when this all happened, as I said, never mind all the appointments and the, you know, all that stuff and the fear, I did feel like, you know, as if we were in a canoe paddling along, living a good life. And all of a sudden they turned the canoe around and I'm going up stream into rapids and I got additional weight. Like I lost a paddler and I got extra weight yeah. because on top of all that, because he was such a big support of me and my, my biggest fan, I had to be smiling all the time going, oh, the business is fine. Don't worry about it, John. It's all good. Because if he thought for a minute that I was suffering in any way because of him, like that would have gutted him. Yeah. So I needed to be able to say to him, no, it's all good. No matter if I believed it or not. I also felt that, you know, when we, but he was first diagnosed, it was very grim diagnosis. They said six months without uh, treatment, two years with treatment. Now we never really bought into that I you know he did amazingly well for four years and then he just got really sick quickly and and, and that was that but our philosophy was if they're wrong then we spent two years clutching each other's hands crying about it and we wasted our life or we wasted two years if they're right then what was these last two years for? We wasted them sitting here clutching hands, crying about it. Yeah. So we felt that that was not the way to go. So I also, you know, took them on a surprise vacation to see cousins in England and I had family events and that took organizing. Like, you know, True. you know, that doesn't happen on its own. So, so that was really what, when the hour, when the day strategies allowed me to, it allowed me to be present and that I have no regrets about how I handled that journey with him. He felt me fully present at all times. I was clear minded. You know, I gave it my 100% focus and I was lucky enough to return to a business that was thriving. So that's what I want people to understand is your business should support your life, not consume it. And everyone has a story. And when people, sometimes I struggled in the beginning because people would bestow too much sympathy on you and it was not comfortable for me. And what I would say to them is this, everybody is something. This is my something right now. Please don't pity me. Don't treat me differently. Everybody is something. It's just my something became public. That's all. I'm speechless. Well, I've never seen that. <laughs> I mean, that, that's just an amazing. I've never, you know, I'm, Chris, I've never, I've talked to a lot of people. I've interviewed a lot of people and just so concise, you say, here's what happened. So here's what I did. Here's this, there's that, da -da, now, and this is what you could do for you. And it's like, that's impressive and heartfelt and amazing. And I thank you for sharing that with us. I want to thank you for asking. Where can people get in touch with you? Because this interview is probably going to increase your schedule and you're going to need a whole new system now because we're, 
this audience of mine, we need, we need you. So where can we all find you and reach out? Maybe there's, I have an idea. Maybe there should be a group, an errands group. It's like a support group where everyone just joins me. We hire you collectively to help us as a big group hug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're interested in doing that, email me and we'll call Chris and we'll get a group rate going. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But and, where can and people find you? Is a friend of mine, that's for sure. So, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Where can people yeah. find you directly? So you can check us out at winthehourwintheday.com. And I can always be reached on LinkedIn and also on Instagram at the Chris Ward. And LinkedIn, of course, just is Chris Ward. So that's my two primary focuses. And Chris is with a K. Yes, K-R-I-S-W-A-R-D. So she always likes to keep it, you know, tantalizing. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your time. Well, we appreciate you. You are a bright light in the world, and I am honored to have this time with you. But uh, I've never seen a room that you walked into that you didn't light up. So it's an honor to be here. Well, I'm going to keep you even closer now because you're good for my soul. <laughs> thank you, everyone, for watching. For more information on Chris Ward, you heard her there, and we'll list it here on our website. But thanks for watching That Girl from Jersey, and we'll see you soon. Have a great day.